Hello Watch Enthusiasts! Now today I'd like to speak about two very interesting models that I have in for review. And these are models from NTH. And NTH are a, a young brand which has been featured very extensively on YouTube by, by certain, uh, certain particular um, YouTubers. And rightly so, I feel, because having now handled these two, I must say the quality for the price is very, very interesting and provides something very different to the conventional industry standard for what you would, uh, you would expect for the price. And NTH are, are, as I say, a very young brand and do feel like the work of an enthusiast in the sense that it's the details which shine, the quality of different elements of the case, the, uh, the attention to the case being designed in a certain way and not another, as opposed to large overbearing differences. And whilst this all seems uh, relatively abstract before I've spoken about the watches individually, I hope that these elements are, are conveyed throughout the review because I feel this is very important to the way these watches feel. And uh, of course these, these are, um, are very much vintage inspired, as you can see I have two models here, which is the Bayer with no date, and the Manakin uh, Renegade with the date. And both I think represent a, uh, a shared sort of view on the way watches should be made and designed, but as I will talk about, both have very key inspirations from vintage pieces, but still feel very contemporary thanks to their finishing and their general build. However, before I begin the video, I would of course like to give my usual statement that I'm not being paid to produce this review. And I think this is very important to say because uh, because I think bias does affect a review quite uh, quite negatively, and so as a result, I think it is it is important to to be able to state this at the start of the video, so as to uh, to make very clear that uh, there isn't a bias in terms of payment to produce any sort of positive feedback on this watch, um, and indeed um, indeed compromise my integrity and indeed the integrity of this video to you, my viewers. And so with that said. I'd like to show you the packaging these watches come with first of all, just to be able to, to set the scene as to what they, uh, what they come in and what you get in terms of accessories. And so here's the full set of items that come with the watch. Because as you can see, they come with an outer sleeve which is, uh, is cardboard and is very nicely detailed for a watch of this price which comes in around the £500 mark. Because one has this attractive uh, cardboard sleeve with the right watch, the, the, the exact watch which you've, uh, you've ordered, and so one sees the version for the Bayer and the one for the Nacken Renegade. Then with that you also get a, uh, a card which comes with each watch, but also this which is a rather interesting uh, concept for a way of holding it, which is a mount that you can stick on the back of your phone or, or elsewhere and use as a card holder, which shows a, a sort of a, a further function than simply having these as, um, as, as pieces that will simply go into a drawer. And I think the way the watch itself is presented is also very appealing, because they come in this leatherette sort of, um, uh, sort of uh, holder, if you will, with the NTH logo, and this is well finished and slides out with this velvet interior that holds the watch and also will hold uh, any extra parts or, uh, or, or items that happen to, to come with the watch in here, so for example spare links. And each watch does come with uh, two extra links in addition to the already very long bracelet, so whatever your wrist size this will, uh, will be able to accommodate it. And so I'll put this all aside now and talk about the watches. And so here are the watches in all their glory. And I've been very, very keen to, to, to handle these for a while, bearing in mind the fact that they've been described with such, uh, such interest by such a great many people. And I think when a small brand is able to provide something which creates such a stir, it really is worth, uh, worth the, the attention. And so I'm very grateful to, to Page & Cooper, um, the, my, my, uh, my, my favoured um, seller of watches in the UK, and I will point it out that I'm not being paid to say that in any way, but they just have been so helpful with regards to, uh, to, to providing these watches for the purposes of this review. I, I really must thank them. Um, it, really, it really is a pleasure to be able to handle these pieces, because they take a very traditional form in terms of, of their, uh, their sizing. Now I'll put down the, the Bayer to just hold the Nacken for a bit, and talk you through the, uh, the dimensions and the general build of the case, which is identical on both watches. Now the case itself is 316L stainless steel, and, and comes in this, uh, this brushed and polished finish, which is more broken up than on, on a conventional style of, of Submariner case, for example, where one has polished sides and, and brush tops to the lugs. Instead, this is a more varied um, style of layout. But in terms of dimensions, they take a somewhat classic form in terms of their sizing, because one sees that they're 40 millimeters from side to side, 48 millimeters from lug to lug, and I, uh, I say that uh, with a sort of proviso, they are very, very heavily curved downwards, and so will, uh, will wrap around the wrist very keenly and they have an 11.5mm thickness, making this extremely slim for a 300m dive watch, which, uh, which really is very impressive, especially for a brand of this size, to be able to engineer things in that direction. And the resounding feeling with this case is one of quality. Um, the case itself is beautifully brushed along its sides, and I must say the quality here really is immensely high. 
one doesn't see this level of, of brushing, which as you can see is even difficult to show on camera because it is so fine um, on anything short of, for example, a Tudor, um, where one sees this, uh, this level of finesse. One also sees this um, on the, the top of the lugs, for instance, where one sees uh, brushing downwards as opposed to around the case, which helps to streamline the lug shape and plays into that, that style of tapered tip which these lugs reach. Of course, one has these beautiful polished bevels which run right the way along the case and don't simply cover the lugs, which I think helps again to slim the case. And whereas on, um, on, on and I, I use the example um, quite, uh, quite often because I think it's a very close comparison, older Rolex cases, for example, one doesn't see this bevel go all the way along the case, and I, I appreciate this, this, this break away from what could easily have resembled a Rolex too closely in terms of a 40mm case diver with this, um, this long elongation of the lugs and these flat sides and flat tops to the lugs. But I'm glad to see that they've been able to step away from that comparison, and, uh, and it really is, uh, is attractive to see a brand which isn't directly influenced by any particular, uh, particular origin. Of course, one also has drilled lugs, which are extremely helpful if you enjoy changing straps and bracelets quickly and, and easily, because they allow you to not have to fight around the back of the, um, the, the spring bar and the, uh, the, the end link. Instead, they allow you to pop them out more easily, and then you can, uh, can manoeuvre the end link out of the, uh, the gap between the lugs, which is 20mm on this watch. Then sitting atop the case, one can see one has this, uh, this bezel, which is a 120-click coin-edge bezel, and continues the brushed form of the rest of the case. And a concern with this bezel when I first, uh, first received the watches to take a look at was that it wouldn't be easy to grip. But because these are quite thick knurlings and, uh, and they do appear um, very proud of the case because of the depth of that bevel, one is able to very easily turn the bezel very, very tightly between each mark. And as you can see, there really is no play between each individual, um, indiv each individual slot out of those 120. And so one really can place this with confidence. And that's something which one doesn't always get. Often there's a certain amount of back play with bezels, but in this case there really isn't any, which is a testament to the build quality. And the insert is quite interesting as well, because they haven't gone for conventional aluminium or ceramic, but instead have gone for something slightly more alternative. Because instead of those options, they've gone for this style of, of brushed steel. And so it's a brushed steel insert, which is then uh, given a, a DLC or a diamond-like carbon PVD coating. And so that's where the surface is, um, is, is given a, uh, an electrical charge and then bombarded with, uh, with the opposite charged um, particles which form this coating. And because it's DLC, it's a, it's a very, very hard-wearing finish. And they do stay to make very clear that it's of the highest quality. And considering the, the depth of the colour and the fact that the brushing doesn't affect it in any way, one certainly can perceive quality here. Then, of course, one has varied graduations. And in fact, on the bar here, this is somewhat different. But on this version, you can see one has, uh, one has these cutouts in the surface of the bezel, which are now then filled with luminova. And this allows the bezel to take on a, a fully glowing form, though, of course, you'll witness that in the loom shot. Then if I just return the, the bezel to 12 o'clock, you'll note there is also a pip which has been integrated into that triangle at 12 on the bezel, which is something which has been seen on Tudors, for example, like the Pelagos, where they realised that a triangle was less legible than having that pip, and I can certainly understand that it works very well on this watch from a visual perspective in terms of being able to pick out the orientation quickly and easily. Then if I turn the case on its side, one sees the crown, which is nice and large, and as you can see, sits against the case very, very tightly. However, because of its form um, diverging somewhat, it's very easy to grip, and has an extremely smooth threading, um, and pops out extremely easily. Um, then, of course, the surface of the crown has the NTH logo, and those who've seen these watches before will know that the NTH logo is actually filled with luminova. And what this means is that in the dark, that glows as well, giving a really very interesting look to the watch, and something a bit more aesthetically pleasing than simply having a, a loomed front to the timepiece. Now, of course, the, the case back of the watch, bearing in mind the watch is so slim, isn't an exhibition case back, and I'll just open the, um, the clasp on the bracelet to be able to show you more clearly. But as you can see, it doesn't have an exhibition case back, but instead is a, um, a, a brushed and milled style of, uh, of case back, which is very flat and thus allows the, the case to be slimmer at that 11.5mm uh, thickness. Across the back of the watch, one sees a, um, a lengthways brushing, which helps to elongate the case and creates a really wonderful contrast against the circular form with the br brushed um, and polished elements of the case back. And whilst this is simple, and I know, I know a, few, a few people have commented on the fact they would prefer if there was some sort of engraving or, uh, or description, I must say it doesn't pose any problem, because I do appreciate the fact that I'd rather have a more slender case 
than one with a, um, a sort of a logo or something else embossed on the case back. Then looking at the front of the watch, you can see the fact the watch has a slightly domed crystal. And one element which I really like about this watch is the fact that the crystal is extremely close in terms of being completely flush with the bezel. And so you get this very subtle dome upwards, which means there's no distortion when you look at it. And the fact that it has a very healthy dose of anti-reflective coating on this sapphire crystal really helps. So as you can see, there's no, um, there's no, uh, no angle really where this isn't legible unless you get to the really extreme angles. But it's an extremely good layout and setup, which, which seems to work very, very well for the watch, and appears to be very well thought out, which, which I certainly do appreciate when considering the fact that this watch is very affordable. And then speaking about the, uh, the movement of the watch, which I'll talk about before speaking about the individual dials and differences between these two watches and the rest of the range. Because looking at, uh, at this, uh, this movement inside this watch, they've chosen to use the Miyota 9015. And this is a movement which I think is a very good choice for this, uh, this watch. It's a very, very reliable Japanese Miyota movement, but also really does give ETA movements a run for their money in terms of, uh, of specifications. Because in terms of, uh, of its details and its specs, it works extremely similarly to an ETA. So one's able to have the, the 4 hertz um, higher beat rate than, than one would see, for example, from most Seiko movements, or more, uh, more old-fashioned Miyota movements, and so one gets a very smooth run to the seconds. Then if I just unscrew the crown, um, and, uh, and explain that it is automatic, of course, as well, um, giving you a 42-plus um, a hour power reserve. It is also given a, a manual wind option. Um, it does, in addition to that, have a quick set date, and, of course, hacking, so you can stop the seconds and set the watch exactly against a, um, uh, against a coordinated time, uh, time, sort of, uh, time zone or, or, indeed, timekeeping device. And this is seen in both watches, whether they're date or no-date versions, and this is one slight quibble I have with this watch, which is it would have been nice to see on the no-date versions, such as the Bayer, the, uh, the 90S5 instead of the 9015, because that's the same movement, except it doesn't have the, the date function, so there wouldn't be a, um, a superfluous um, or at least functionless um, position for the crown on the versions with no date, though I must admit this is a, a very small niggle and something which doesn't pose any problem during, uh, during daily use. Now, speaking directly about the Nakan, which is, a, is an interesting piece in terms of its, its origins, its name comes um, from a, um, uh, an old uh, pre-Germanic and uh, a Norse um, legend of, um, of aquatic spirits, but certainly it carries that very well with this Tudor Submariner aesthetic, and this is immediately seen in the dial, because as you can see, the dial itself on this Renegade version has this, this brushed finish from top to bottom, and this gives a wonderful eeriness to its surface, with this subtle light blue coloration. In fact, it looks almost white in some, uh, in some, uh, in some lights, but, uh, but I think works very, very well with the design of the watch, and is formed in this fumé style. So the very edges of the dial are dark grey or black, whilst the centre is this blue. On top of that, one has this Tudor-style layout, which does resemble Tudor snowflake submariners, with the, the more, more closely um, triangular style of, of 12 o'clock marker, and then these, um, these squares around the dial, with the date placed at 6 o'clock for symmetry. And the date window is very attractively cut with these beveled edges and a silver date wheel instead of having the, the conventional white, which helps to really build the, uh, the aesthetic of this watch and give it a more, a more uniform look. In addition to that, the hands fit the, uh, the style very, very well and do change from model to model in the range, depending upon which version you go for. But in this case, they fit it with snowflake hands, which are brushed across their length um, and then are, are filled with loom, which I will show you in the dark. Um, and, and, uh, and do appear to follow the lines of the dial very, very effectively. Of course, this watch is a 300-meter diver, and so that is also advertised on the dial. And the other distinctive feature about the Nakan is the fact that it, does, it uh, has graduations to 15 and then every five minutes on the bezel, which is something which is very much the, the norm and the standard for a, uh, a dive watch. And the Bayer, by contrast, takes perhaps a more classic form to the Nakan. And of course it shares the rest of its case, um, indeed its movement, and its general build with the Nakan, having the same, the same functionality. But it's in the dial and the details, and of course this is the no-date version. There is a date version at 6 o'clock as well. And this piece takes a very classic form of inspiration, with its dial being this matte black, an extremely fine matte black as well, with these creamy green indices which appear very military in their, in their, uh, their design. And as a result of, um, of the, the use of this tooth um, style of almost Tudor-esque dial, um, one really does have a very military feel. And this is also given by the slightly faded red, red 24-hour markers running around the inside of the dial, 
which uh, which are reminiscent of the uh, the elements of, for example, the prototype Hoyer 844s, um, which uh, which included these these styles of hands as well. And the hands are these cathedral forms with the the minutes taking a pencil shape, and then the the hours that cathedral shape, with the, the seconds taking this this uh, this counterweighted style, which is very legible and reaches each marker extremely closely and um, very tightly, which is what you would want. And of course, then you have simply NTH bar here, 300 meters, 1,000 feet, which I think describes the, um, the the watch extremely well, and gives this watch a, a much more simple aesthetic than the uh, the, the Nacken Renegade. The bezel also has changed because, as you can see, it still remains black and still has that brushed uh, that brushed finish in uh, in DLC steel. But now it isn't graduated from zero to fifteen. Instead, it simply runs in these five-minute increments, which again is why this watch has a slightly more sixties feel, as a great deal of the more casual dive watches from that period weren't graduated for the first fifteen minutes. Now, where the bracelet of this watch is concerned, one has a shared style of, of oyster-esque bracelet on both of these watches, which is finished in a unique way to these watches. As you can see, it has a, a more modern style of, um, of end link, which reaches out to connect to the first link, rather than having the spring bar hold the bracelet together, which is my personal preference, and I must say I'm glad they did it this way, rather than having the, um, the, 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 the fight, really, and the struggle of trying to, to keep the bracelet attached whilst you attach it to the case, which can be the case with, with more simple and rudimentary bracelets. Then the links are finished in exactly the same brushing as the case, which is very, very fine, and certainly feels, uh, feels of extremely high quality. And, and certainly the, the fact that it's fully articulated helps as well, where some Oyster bracelets have these three links connected together, and thus are reducing the articulation. Here it has full articulation, which allows it to be very, very comfortable on the wrist. And the bracelet does also take a different form to, a, to an Oyster bracelet, in the sense that its, its links are symmetrical top to bottom. And so they give this, uh, this almost grain of rice style of shape from the side, which really does help to, uh, to wrap around the wrist and give a very smooth, um, smooth finish, um, and also prevents them from catching any hairs, which is always an added benefit. In terms of adjustment, they take a, a 1 to a 1.2mm style of screwdriver, and so it is worth buying a screwdriver specifically for this application. And they do have small half links as well, you get two with each bracelet, in order to, to help get the, the fit absolutely right. And then, of course, you do have an enormous amount of, um, of micro-adjustment on the, the, the clasp itself, which allows you to move it in by, by at least two links in terms of length if you move it right, uh, right all the way into its, its furthest position. And in terms of the, the clasp, you get this, um, this solid milled elbow joint, and as you can see, I've had to keep the, the stickers on just to protect this, uh, as it, uh, it's not a, a sample piece in terms of re reviewing and, and using on a regular basis, but um, I think you can still see how it works. Um, you have this milled elbow joint, which then clips um, clips down, and then of course is released by these two triggers. And then you have this security latch, which goes down over the top with the NTH logo. And these are also, as you can see, beveled along their edge to give this this brushed finish a, a bit of contrast and a bit of extra detailing. And the brushed finish is continued along the sides of the links as well to give a, a more military feel to the bracelet, but also to lighten it in terms of its aesthetic presence on the wrist. And so I feel that for the price of £580 for this, this buyer and 600 for the Renegade and version of the Nacken, I think they're astounding value. And I think that they really are a testament to the amount of very interesting young brands appearing at the moment with a, a very interesting product, which I think gives a, a very different perspective on what's available on the market to what we would immediately assume is, is available from, from the watch industry. So now I'll show you the loom shot of these watches. So I'll just turn out the light and be straight back with you. And so here are the two watches in the dark, and as you can see, they really do light up like a Christmas tree. So on the right we have the Bahia, and then on the left we have the Nacken. And so as you can see, there is a bit more loom on the Nacken, because as you can see, um, though it's, it's not quite, uh, quite as clear as I would, uh, would want it to be, the, uh, the, the individual markers for each, each second or minute are also luminous. And this creates an incredibly bright, uh, bright visual effect, which I think my camera simply isn't able to pick up. But certainly from, from seeing them in person, that's the effect you get. Of course, also the bezel lights up uh, extremely extensively with that, so that that plot as well at 12, and then throughout its, uh, its, its numerals. But then if you look at the side of these, you can see that the, the crown also glows, which is rather an interesting touch, and, and an attractive one as well, um, if you're uh, using these watches at night. Then in the case of the Bayer, you can see that one has, uh, one has a slightly different colour of loom from the bezel to the dial, though I must say this isn't too much of a concern. 
um, but both are extremely bright and are able to, to last extremely effectively throughout the night since I've been able to, to get uh, about eight hours of, of glowing time from these, which is very much at the end of what I would expect from a, a watch at any price range, let alone this one. Now on the wrist you can see the watch wears quite flat in terms of its form on the wrist. However, in terms of its depth, it really is incredibly slim, thanks to the fact the case back, though flat, is subtly domed and thus sinks in very well. Then you can see that sharp curvature to the lugs really helps in terms of accentuating the curvature of the case, which is present, and the fact that it only has a 48mm lug to lug length means that it's about wearable for any sort of wrist size because of that shape. And so whilst it may appear relatively uh, relatively slender and uh, and perhaps somewhat small in terms of being 40 millimeters, it really is wearable for big or small wrists, thanks to the lugs being relatively long, but so heavily curved. And then once on the wrists, you can see it's extremely comfortable in terms of not digging into the wrist where the crown is concerned, because you can see there really is no um, uh, no danger of catching the crown on, uh, on the wrist whatsoever, which can be a concern with unguarded and rather large big crowns like this. And so I'll take the watch off now and, uh, and conclude the video. And so at this point I'd like to conclude the video, but in terms of, of really my, my closing remarks about these watches, I think the value here is, is unmistakably impressive. In terms of what you're getting from a, an anti-reflective domed sapphire crystal, that extremely interesting bezel insert, the sheer beauty of the dial finishing, and then of course just the delicate nature of the cases, I think it's difficult to find a fault with these watches at the price they're offered for. I suppose if I really had to find one, it would be that uh, there is a, um, a, a redundant position for the crown on the no-date versions, but even that is of no real concern or consequence to me. Aside from that, perhaps it would have been nice to see a more complex clasp, as there are such options on the market, though I feel in terms of remaining slender, this is perhaps the best solution, and thus fits with these watches better than a more complicated clasp would. And so these really are impressive pieces from a very interesting new brand, and I really would urge you to, uh, to take a look at them. And so do tell me in the comments down below what you thought of this video, and indeed of these watches, because they are an acquired taste in terms of their particular designs, but there are many other designs than these, uh, these existing ones um, in this review, um, in terms of, of appealing to every taste. And so if you did enjoy the video, then do please like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and also to be able to see more content and, uh, and videos here in future. So thank you very much for watching, this is Armour the Watch Guy, out.